recognition of guests and special accomplishments. And I'll hand that over to Mrs. Bush. Okay, thank you. Uh, before we get started on our recognition of guests and accomplishments, just want to take a moment to remember and recognize all of those uh, fellow Kentuckians who had such a tragedy over this past weekend. And just to keep them in our thoughts, um, we as a district are working to collect water, bottled water, uh, that's one of the basic great needs right now, and so we're going to continue to do that through the week, but just um, to recognize them, recognize uh, all of those who are suffering loss and letting them know that our thoughts are with them at this time. So with that, we'll move on to recognition of guests. Uh, we're going to start with our students of the month, and so if we can start with Elizabethtown High School and principal, Mr. Elton. Tell good things about you. This is Donovan Adams, uh, four-time, uh, let me read from the list, you've got so much here. Uh, four-time uh, member of the Chuck team, soccer team, beta club, three years with student council, two-year member of Spanish club, one year at FBLA. Does that sound about right? That's good. Uh, 4.0 student, uh, excelled also in soccer, listed here as three-time region champion and also district champion. I think you're here just last month. There you go. Uh, he also plans to attend the University of Kentucky to st study mechanical engineering. Uh, so those are some of his accomplishments. Um, Mr. Yates says Donald has been a staple to our soccer program for the last several years. He dedicated himself to uh, any discipline he is involved in. He is a very intelligent, charismatic, and hardworking young man. Mr. Todd says Donald is a great young man. He's very personable and participates often in class. He's very deserving of Student of the Month. Uh, Ms. Lively goes on to say he's an excellent, excellent student, hard worker, understands and works hard in AP Physics. Um, and Ms. Mills says he's an excellent student. Uh, I've had the pleasure to be an engineer teacher for two years, and knowing that that's the field you're going to go in, that's pretty exciting. Also, learned a quick story about the beta uh, national champion on the quiz bowl, right? Yes. A math genius out here, right? Math's pretty easy for you? Yeah. Uh, so uh, they actually won the national championship made a, a nas national quiz month. So, Donovan Adams, our December student of the month. Congratulations. Uh, unfortunately, our TK Stone student of the month is unable to be with us tonight, so we're going to recognize them at uh, our January meeting. Uh, so, we will move on to Mr. Howe from Public Heights. <laughs>
Isabella Napier is a third grade student in Ms. Watson's class. She's not just any ordinary student. Isabella exemplifies what it means to have Panther pride, and her class is very proud she was chosen as Helmwood Heights' December student of the month. Here are a few insights they want to share about her character. Consideration of others is a defining trait of Isabella's. She is kind and willing to help others solve their problems. Isabella is also good-hearted. She will always lend a hand when you need one and is willing to listen to see if she can help. When playing games, Isabella is fair and invites all to participate. She always tries to make everyone feel like they belong. Isabella is a very warm and inviting personality. She's always smiling and greets others in the morning. Isabella has a great sense of humor too. She often tells jokes to make people laugh, but only when it, it, only when it is appropriate. Isabella makes good choices and encourages others to make good choices as well. Helmut High students are hard workers, and that is an accurate description for Isabella. She is patient and pays attention in class. Isabella is enthusiastic when learning new content and makes reading a joy when you partner with her. When things are difficult, however, she never gives up. Isabella shows resiliency by trying hard each day and always doing her best. As a teacher, Ms. Watts agrees with her students as to Isabella's char excellent character. She feels Isabella is a role model for other students by putting forth a positive attitude every day and always, follows the gui always following the guidelines for success. Ms. Watts says Isabella demonstrates perseverance and is a respectful and young lady. She makes learning fun for herself and others. Isabella's never give up attitude and infectious love of learning makes the classroom a wonderful place to be. I feel very blessed to have Isabella as a member of our classroom. She is nine years old. She lives with her two brothers, two sisters, and grandmother. Isabella enjoys many activities such as playing card games, coloring, and playing pretend teacher. Her favorite place to visit is Florida. That's fun too. She has a pet cat named Possum and a dog named Biscuit as well as countless fish. We want to thank and congratulate Isabella for being such a great role model for the students and staff at Humboldt Heights Elementary School.
recognition for uh, a group of students at Wichita High School who have accomplished something in the first year of the EHS's history. So I think we have Ms. Hiddleston. And Ms. Hiddleston, come on. And Ms. Hiddleston. I'm going to do all the time. Come up, ladies. Won't y'all? Yeah. Come on. So these ladies here actually were the first ever here at E-Town to go through the Nurses Aid Certification Program. And uh, it was pulled off by number one, their drive and determination. I think y'all have a big test coming up, right? Thursday? Tomorrow, there you go. So we need to get them home so they can study a little bit. Uh, but they've gone through the program through ECTC, who's worked with us, and also uh, can't help not to mention Baptist Health, uh, who's helped as well, right? Um, and Ms. Hiddle's here because she really kind of spearheaded it. Uh, there was an interest uh, from these young ladies, and uh, they're going to receive their certification. I know we're going to be positive, right? and we're going to celebrate later on in the week, correct? All right, you can count on that. Uh, so we're here to recognize them for that. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a big proponent, and hopefully they see that, that I want students to do what they want to do, um, and we do what we have to do, so we can do that, right? And so this is one of the ways. Um, and I uh, can't say enough about their hard work, determination, the board helping out with transportation over for a handful of them. They're actually traveling to LaRue County, right, and doing your clinicals, correct? Are we done? Mm -hmm. Done with that. So they had a hands-on experience there. So just can't say enough about that. And if they go into the nursing field, they've got to step up. If not, then you, you've learned to persevere and finish out something, correct? So we want to recognize them at this time. Uh, Abigail Beal. Kiera DeWalt. Alia Frazier. Lily Gibson. Yesenia Hernandez. Hannah McCubbin. actually provided a stethoscope and a blood pressure cuff for them. Uh, we were able to do that uh, from the school as a congratulations. Tonight's another one, and we're going to celebrate after you pass your test, right? Congratulations. Ladies, we are very proud of you all, and uh, I just want to give uh, many, many kudos to Mr. Elmore and to Ms. Hendel for all they have done to support and uh, do whatever is needed to allow these students to participate in this program. So uh, thank you all very much. And I will turn it back over to you. Well, that's all we have for recognition of guests and all your accomplishments. So we appreciate all that you all do for us, for our school system. But guys, that's it. We're going to carry on with the rest of the meeting. You're welcome to stay or you all uh, feel free to go. <laughs> thank you, Michelle. Yeah, thank you all very much. Thank you all. Okay. Everybody come here with your certificates. Come in here with your certificates. Get over here with them. Oh, yeah. The restaurant. That was awesome. Yep, thank you. Not too fast. Yeah. We'll, we'll squeeze through here too. <laughs> that way we don't. Is there any discussion about the consent? Is there a motion to approve the consent
motion. So right now. Are we going to discuss this? Yes. Yes, that's okay. We have Mr. Chip Southworth here uh, to discuss our action item, uh, which is the consideration of approval of a resolution authorizing a contract, rent, and lease with the Elizabethtown Independent School District Finance Corporation and approving all other documents in connection with the proposed District Finance Corporation series of the 2022 bond issue. So that will be the motion. That's a pretty long one, but uh, Mr. Southworth is here to discuss that with you. Yeah, you can stay here or stand up there, whatever you're comfortable with. Whatever you're most comfortable with. I'll just come to the block in front of the mat. There you go. <laughs> good, uh, good evening. Thanks for having me here. Uh, Denise and I have uh, for you guys the, the the bond resolution that we'll need the board to approve and then the finance corporation also will need to approve it because that's actually the, the entity that provides the security. So um, just high level, um, the, the school board enjoys the benefit of the, the combo that he's making the debt payments on, on behalf of the board. This will be supported by SFCC, the School Facilities Construction <coughs> Commission. So um, they actually make the payments of around $60,000 per year for 20 years. And so we're going to sell bonds that are um, equal to that payment amount. So we're going to sell bonds after the first of the year, and that's when we'll have the interest rate, and uh, then we'll have the, the closing not too <coughs> soon there. So, in short, that's it. I have the you have the resolution in front of you. I'm happy to read the summary of it for you or uh, take action on that from the board's perspective, and then we can do the finance corporation. Whichever you prefer. Yeah. Probably be best if you just go ahead and read it. Okay. Yeah. So I'll do the Board of Education resolution real short, just a summary. Resolution of the Board of Education of Elizabeth County Independent School District authorizing and approving the execution of a lease agreement between the board and Elizabeth County Independent School District Finance Corporation and approving renovations and improvements at Elizabeth County High School. So with that uh, approval, then we'll be able to sell bonds for a little over a million dollars for your <coughs> project. <clears throat> I'm smiling behind this yeah. man. Yeah, it's hard to have it. Okay, is there a motion to approve this resolution? So moved. No, no. Is there a second? I'll second. Can I second? All in favor say aye. Mm -hmm. uh, motion passes. Mm -hmm. All right, and now we will yeah. need a motion to recess to conduct the district finance corporation meeting. So uh, moved. Uh, uh, all in favor say aye. 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 All right. <coughs> I could call to order a uh, special meeting of the Finance Corporation. Uh, and now we need to. Is there any discussion? If you could. Just explain it then. Sure. For okay. Them. This part of it. This okay. So the school just just for, for education, the school board uh, lawfully is not allowed to borrow money unless it pays it back within that fiscal year. So that's that's kind of the deal. And so what we do in Kentucky, because uh, we're getting ready to be getting ready to borrow money for a twenty year basis, is the school mm -hmm. district finance corporation, which is a lawfully created organization that's comprised of the board, will actually. Uh, agree to make these payments uh, on behalf of the school board. So that's what we're doing here. So we need the school board. This is the, now the school district finance corporation. You all will approve uh, a lease agreement with the with the board. And your obligation to pay is only as good as the state's ability to, to send you money every year for this um, for this bond issue. So similarly, I'm going to read a short summary and then have you all exercise that. Uh, go from there. So, um, the resolution of the Board of Directors of the Elizabeth County Independent School District Finance Corporation authorizing the issuance and sale of Elizabeth County Independent School District Finance Corporation School Building Revenue Bonds Series 2022 to provide funds to be applied to the two finance renovations and improvements at Elizabeth County High School, providing for a competitive <coughs> sale of the bonds and authorizing any related documents and actions. And that's the summer resolution that I would uh, so kindly need uh, approval. Okay. Is there a motion to approve this resolution? Make a motion to approve the resolution. Okay. Uh, is there a second? 
<coughs> EIS schools will not be used for polling purposes uh, for the upcoming uh, calendar year and next year, so we can be in session. If we were going to, in the past, Elmwood, TK, and the high school, as well as Panther Academy, I believe, were voting precincts, where well, they're no longer using our schools and Eastham schools. They've reduced the number of voting locations in Hardin County, and they will not need our schools. So we can be in session on voting day, on election day. So we can be in session on that uh, November 8th. In the past, FDEA day was also scheduled that Monday before the 8th, so that would be November 7th. As of now, our local chapter has not scheduled a date, so we have some wiggle room to move off that date for the upcoming year. And then in 2023, the primary election is the first Tuesday after the third Monday in May, which typically is Tuesday, May the 16th. But since we're not a voting location, we can be in school that Tuesday on May 16th. Um, every presidential election, we are required to be out of school. But we got three more years before that comes back up. So, with option one, we basically created a calendar very similar to this year's calendar. Uh, it's almost identical. You have three PD days before the school year, one in November on election day, and three professional learning planning days. Those are August 8th, October 10th, which is the day after fall break, and January 2nd, which is the Monday after Christmas break. First day of school will be August 10th. Last day of school will be May 24th. First day of preschool, August 18th. Last day of preschool, May 16th, with FDEA day, uh, dismissal day being November 7th, that Monday before election day, next November. Option two calendar, all four PD days will take place before school starts. You have three professional learning planning days. Uh, those will take place after each break. The Monday after fall break, the Monday after Christmas break and the Monday after spring break. First day of school is the same in both calendars. Only difference in option one and option two, first day of school and option one, or last day of school and option one is the 24th, last day of school and option two is the 25th. First day of preschool is the same, August the 18th. Last day of preschool is one day later, 17th. And now FDEA day, Dismissal day can take place on the 21st and 22nd before Thanksgiving, which will allow us to have the entire week of Thanksgiving off with option two. So we sent that out with the calendars. I gave each one of you a copy, or Ms. Mabel sent that out to y'all last week. And option two was a, a resounding winner. They have 75 to 77% of the vote. So option two had 132 votes. Option one and 38 votes. So do, do you all have any questions about the school calendar? So this is just informational meeting tonight, and then in January you can vote on what calendar option you want to go with. So thank you all. That brings us to our handle with care model. I don't know if you're very familiar with that, uh, when Senate uh, Bill uh, 1 came about in 2018, they put a lot of things in place for school safety. And as they developed our school safety protocols, the Handlewood Care model started to come out. And uh, when I first stepped into this position, Captain Kerr was serving as a lead teacher at Valley View, and she actually went to a conference in West Virginia. And she was the very first person to even make me aware of handle with care and it wasn't long after that that our entire state started learning about it and uh, so basically what this is is if a law enforcement officer encounters one of our students in a situation outside of school they will enter that information into KY Ops which is controlled by the Kentucky State Police once they enter that they will generate a basic email to all the students, uh, building administrators. So if they dealt with an eighth grader, Ms. Swank would get an email, 
the assistant principal will get an email, the counselor will get an email, myself, I get an email, uh, Carol Brown gets an email, and I forward that email also to our new um, social worker through our project for rent grant, <coughs> Miranda Burnett, and she, she's aware of it. Now basically, this is not for us to cry into the student's business. This is for us just to be aware that this student <laughs> has a traumatic event. And if you see them having any issues at school, then that's why. And we may have to intervene in the school. <coughs> so basically, this is what it looks like. You have a law enforcement situation. They're going to enter in KY Ops. That's going to be sent to the superintendent's office, which I'm the representative for that. And then it's going to go to the principal. And then it's also going to go to school counselor, sometimes a school nurse. And then if teachers need to be made aware of it, school counselor and principal will share that with the teacher. So I'm not sure if you're familiar with the executive director of the Kentucky Center for School Safety. His name is Mr. John Akers. And our state school safety marshal is Mr. Bill Ben Wilcox. And they have put together a PSA on handle care program. It's only about two and a half minutes, and I was going to show that to y'all real quick if you have time. John Akers, I'm the director of the Kentucky Center for School Safety. And here's my friend, I'm Ben Wilcox, State School Security Marshal. We're here today to talk to you about a program that's out there in the state that you may not be aware of. It's called Handle with Care. And uh, I was a principal for 25 years, so I want to talk to my friends and colleagues out there in the state. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to know when school started each morning is that what kind of baggage are kids getting in school that morning? what's happened at home, what's happened out in the neighborhood that might have adversely affected him or her before they get to school. And so it would be a good idea to get these heads up if I could get them. And so this program of Handle with Care is a partnership with school officials and law enforcement to keep this communication going a little bit more and to explain it a little bit more. I'm going to ask my friend Ben Wilcox to explain it. Handle with Care is a super simple program. How it works is this. Let's say an officer goes to a domestic violence or a call at night or some other type of call where the police were required to respond. When the officer gets to that, that call and there's children involved, uh, they may not be directly involved, they just may be there. But we all know that if there's a domestic or a grandpa passed away or something like that, that could cause problems for the student. After the officer finishes that call, he goes back to his cruiser and on the computers in their vehicle, they call them MVTs. Uh, there is a place for the officer to fill out a handle of care notification. On that notification, uh, they fill out the child's name, age, where they go to school, and that there's been an incident. There's nothing recorded about the incident other than there was an incident while the officer was responding. Once that officer sends that notification, it goes directly to the school. The school principal, counselor, whoever signed up to receive the report, receives that report and gives them a heads up for that next morning when that child walks into school, they know something may have happened the night before. They've been, been up all night, they may be in the same clothes as they were the night before, but it gives them the opportunity to know, hey, that child may need a little help today. And the school officials don't need to jump on the kid as soon as he comes through that front door, but uh, what if the counselor, the teacher, keep an eye on this kid and if there are behaviors that are kind of out of the norm, out of the norm, it would be a good idea for the child to be seen by the counselor so they can work with a little bit better. But like Ben was saying, it's a very simple program. If something happens in the home or in the neighborhood that could adversely affect the kid, you know, the next morning, law enforcement officers will send this note, this, e e this email note or whatever it is, to uh, the schools, the schools will know about it, and there you go. So it's a great program. All districts in the state are using handle care. If you're not receiving handle care notifications, contact your local law enforcement, or you can contact the marshal's office, and our compliance <coughs> officers will work with you to contact local law enforcement to make sure that the handle care notifications are being used. 
It could be as well as just making sure the officers are aware of the program, and reminding them to go ahead and put the handle of parent notification in. It's very, very important that you all receive these notifications. Therefore, you can assist these students that are coming in with, as you know, trauma uh, from the home of something that's happened that night before. Hey, this is just another example of how schools and law enforcement officials are working together hand in hand. Very important for us, and we certainly support that throughout our state. So handle with care, be aware of it, get in contact with your law enforcement officers and be sure that you're all on the same page. And keep on keeping these kids and staff members safe. Thank you for everything that you do. <coughs> So they did a great job of explaining that to that week, uh, explaining what the handle and care program was. We've sent this uh, video clip to all our staff members in each town. We actually give them a training too. There's a training module that they have to complete before school starts. It's a little update about what handle and care is. So they get a lot of information about this program. Uh, it's a statewide program and it keeps us informed and extremely proud of our local law enforcement officers keeping us updated on all the situations we've had. We've had, probably had close to a dozen annual parent notifications this year throughout the entire district uh, at different levels, elementary, middle, and high. Uh, so it just gives us a heads up. If some kids having a bad day, we got that no annual care notification. We know that we need to be a little bit uh, extra uh, gentle with that student, kind of help them through that process. Principals, y'all have anything to say about that? Comments? I do, actually, yes. I think, you know. Um, I think it really helps that the, when the teachers, they, can, you know, they don't have to know the ideas or what happened to the kid, but um, it really helps in the classroom that they are made aware. Um, it gives a little bit more empathy to those kids, and it does make a difference um, in the classroom. It's really important. Thank you all very much. We appreciate it. And I'll just wrap that up by saying uh, I attended the Kentucky uh, Association of School Superintendents conference <coughs> Sunday, Monday, Tuesday of uh, last week, and Handle with Care was on the agenda for the last day, and they were talking about you know how every district in Kentucky now participates in Handle with Care, and I just had a little little inside moment of pride because I do believe we were the very first district in the state of Kentucky uh, and we were on the forefront of this several years ago uh, in partnering with our law enforcement to, to uh, get this going so uh, that was a good thing. session. Yes. So we need a, a motion to adjourn. Yes.